YouTube, so I had a half day off from work today. So I thought I would take advantage and do some book shopping. Even though there's quite a few bookstores here in Portland, I thought I would make a trip down to Salem, Oregon, which is about an hour away from me because they also have quite a few local bookstores. And um, as I'm going to be participating in the Read What You Own Challenge, where I'm going to read 100 books off my shelves, I wanted to get one last bookshop trip in before I'm like cutting myself off cold turkey <laughs> with, with book shopping. And because t starting tomorrow on Friday, I am basically today, I'm on a book buying ban and I'm going to read, a, read slash unhaul 100 books, maybe 100 plus. Um, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'll keep you posted um, with that. I'm thinking maybe like every 25 books or so check in. So we'll just see how, how fast I can progress through that challenge. But I'll just um, share with you what I purchased today. Um, these are all on quite a bit of a theme. Um, <laughs> and you'll see as, as I go through these because it's also going to, um, Nonfiction November is coming up in November. And I, I love that readathon event. Um, I've been participating since like the very first year. And so yeah, I was in the nonfiction mood. So the first one is I'll Take the Back Road by Margaret Hurry Wolf. I've never heard of this author before. And she's written quite a few books and they all seem to be taking place in Vermont. She was initially, here's the author here. She was initially um, someone who went to Vermont, seems to be in the summers. Um, she was born in New Jersey. But then she eventually um, decided to make Vermont her full-time location. And so this is like a, a not a part two, but um, kind of like a sequel to one of her other books that was set in Vermont. This, um, Anything Can Happen in Vermont was her first story, her first collection. So hopefully I don't need to read the first one because I don't know how easy these are to come by. Um, let me see when this was written, um, when it was published. 1975. Um, this edition, but it came out in 1965. So, so yeah, hopefully I can read this without having to read the first one. But if I have to get the first one, that's just going to have to wait until after I get through 100 books. Um, so fingers crossed there. Um, this next one is by Evelyn Surly Hess. It's To the Woods, Sinking Roots, Living Lightly, and Finding True Home. And this is about a woman who, um, she's in her late 50s. And decides to take to the woods in the foothills of the Oregon Coastal Range, which is like right beside me. You have to, um, I'm in the Willamette Valley. And there's um, the mountains, the Cascade Mountains on the, um, to the right of me. And then if you want to go to the ocean, you have to go over like a small, like not, not as high elevation mountains, the Coastal Range to get over there. And so she went to those mountain ranges. Um, and like it's living in the woods and it's talking about her day-to-day -day challenges. I think she's like going to, I'm assuming she's going to build some kind of cabin um, <laughs> there. But but we'll see. I thought this was interesting. And this um, was published by Oregon State University. So it's like a local press. Um, so yeah. And I always like reading books. Like, I, I love reading books, you know, set far away from me in Vermont and places I've never been but always wanted to go to. But I also like reading books that are set you know, local to me because then I'm just... I get the itch to want to go and visit these places and really see with my own eyes, you know, what they're describing here. So um, if she lives, I mean, she's talking about places close to me, then I'm just going to have to check it out myself. Uh, let's see. The next one, now switching over to the other theme I have. Like, these are like, you know, living the country lifestyle, talking about nature, like living a slower life, you know, that kind of thing. Whereas the next group of books are all about like pioneering, frontier, West, Western culture. Um, this one is One Woman's West by Lois Barton, and it's Recollections of the Oregon Trail and Settling the Northwest Country um, by Martha Gay Madison, and it's taking place from 1838 to 1916. And this is, um, it was originally, this book was originally handwritten in pencil on a school tablet. Um, Martha's story is recounting the Western frontier from the 1850s the turn of the century and she grew up in rural Missouri um, and then she had the she took the wagon trip west and um, it's all about you know what she's seeing from her perspective and she becomes eventually becomes a reporter okay so yeah she must have loved writing from the very beginning is there any pictures any? yeah there are pictures sprinkled throughout here so this is an old old school building I can go back to the, uh, the beginning here is there any I'm trying to see if there's a picture of her. This is what her, her tablet that she was 
writing on. But that's why I said there's a picture of the author herself. But I'm sure there's one here in here somewhere. I'm just not gonna not finding it. But um, yeah, this is like a hunting hunting village. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, a village hut that was used for hunting. Yeah, there we go. Um, and it's funny, like you see these kind of um, like with all like the pine needles draped over. Like a little, the little um, teepee kind of thing, and you see these um, all the time on hikes. Like people uh, use them for like breaks or, or, or different throughout the hikes. There's one like in a park that's right near me where kids use it to play. Um, so it's funny how you see see those um, even now. Um, but yeah, here's like the picture of the wagon train going across um, the river. But yeah, I just want to see if there's any pictures of her. But anyway, yeah, I'll have to report back. Um, on what I think of that one. This next one I thought was very interesting. This is about a Jewish um, uh, writer and homesteader. This is Rachel Kalaf's story, Jewish homesteader on the Northern Plains. And she comes from, let me see here, Russia to the United States. And then she gets married and goes to North Dakota. So she is going through quite a bit of, you know, landscape change, <laughs> not even to mention culture change there. So I thought this was fascinating. Uh, to see at the bookstore because I've, I've never read something from that kind of perspective. So this, uh, this I was highly intrigued about. Let's see, is there any other pictures in here? Um, this is her, um, her mother-in-law in Russia. Let's see, is there any other little, couple other pictures here. So this, this is her North Dakota homestead um, from 1905, the land that they ended up purchasing. And this is this is not a bird or anything. This is just a scrape on the picture. Um, but yeah, this was, seems very interesting. Um, okay, and then the next one is a new home, a classic of the American frontier, Caroline M. K um, Kirkland. And I really liked um, the addition here. And here's the here's the author. And um, for this writer, this is um, written in 1839. And let's see. Uh, where is she coming from? She's um, is often called the mother of the Midwestern. Um, do, do, do. Okay, yeah, it's about the founding of the Backwoods Settlement in Michigan. Uh, let's see. It, oh, it has a back on the on the back description. It says Mrs. Caroline Kirkland, who Edgar Allan Poe once described as frank and cordial, even bold yet sufficiently dignified, bri brilliantly witty, and now and then not a little sarcastic unquestionably she is one of our best writers have a pro has a province of her own and in that province has few equals so yeah, this is very interesting um i've i've never heard of this book or this author um so yeah highly intrigued by the descriptions here i mean if alan edgar po, uh, you know edgar Allan poe um is championing her then yeah i'll take i'll take his word on it and then the last book i found at a little free library because i am like as i'm like calling my shelf i have so many books to get rid of so you'll be very um <laughs> proud of me because I got rid of at least 20 books at the Little Free Libraries and I only picked up one so and, and, and the one I read I, when I picked up I can read in five minutes so yeah when there because I don't I try not to add too many books to my shelves when I'm uh as I'm trying to get rid of them um not get rid of them but you know read them and so this is a Caldecott honors book and along with the Newbery winners and honor books that I've been trying to read anytime I see a Caldecott um metal on uh, the, the picture books at a little free library I always pick them up um, so this is Raven and it's a trickster tale from the Pacific Northwest by Gerald McDermott so this again you know still fits in with like my western books here so yeah I, I like how everything's all cohesive uh, but yeah, let me show you some of the artwork here so it's all about this Raven it has you know just a couple of words I mean a couple of sentences per uh, per page so shouldn't take me any time at all to get through. So I, I keep debating with myself if I should focus on the Newberry and get those done and then do the Caldecott um, medal or if I should just do them at the same time and and just take my time with, with getting through them. We'll see how what I think. But yeah, this, this seemed um, fun to read. And I've liked all of the Caldecott medal um, winners that I've Come across so far so they have to get yet to disappoint so yeah these are all of the books that i have purchased on my very last book haul maybe for the year i have no idea how long it's going to take me to read slash 
you know, call for my shelf 100 books. Um, but yeah, my goal is still Christmas because <laughs> I'm going to start tomorrow. So, you know, slash, yeah, it doesn't, can't, 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 can't count today because I did buy a book. So yeah, starting tomorrow. Um, yeah, we'll see how I do. But anyway, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, book too.